Hello, hello, it's me, Jeanette. How are you? Hope you've been well. I know it's been a while since I've done a video, but just things have been really busy with my job and life and you know how time can get away from you. But let's jump into the video. I'm gonna be making some pocket letter sized cards and decorating them with some scraps. And I'm gonna try to just stick to scraps. So this pile of stuff you see on the right is my little scrap box that I have and it's really way too small. I definitely need a little, something that's just a little bit bigger. So it's an A4 sized uh, box. It's clear plastic and it's a document holder, but it probably, I definitely need to upgrade to a bigger size. And they keep all kinds of bits in here. So different size papers, um, pattern papers, things that are left over from other projects some spare pocket litter printables that are in my shop and you know like I don't use them all so I just keep the rest in my scrap box because I know I'm going to use them and also doilies I just sometimes throw <laughs> my doilies in there because I'm too like lazy to put them away where I have store have them stored and so I just end up throwing like all kinds of random things into <laughs> my scrap box. I would love to know the state of your scrap box or scrap drawer or wherever it is that you keep your bits of scrap paper that you know they're left over from a project that you're working on. Um, if you have a moment, leave a comment. Like, do you have a box that's just for scraps? Do you save all your scraps? Do you save just some of your scraps? I know some people only save a certain size of paper because they don't want to be overwhelmed with scrap paper. So like anything smaller than a four by six, they wouldn't save. They would just toss that. So let me know. Like, I'm just so curious about it because, you know, as crafters, we all have different things that we do and... I feel like I don't save a lot of scraps, but when I'm looking at my box, I'm like, wow, I do. I save pretty much <laughs> all the scraps, but I end up using them. I really do. And doing these scrappy pocket letter cards are, you know, it's just a good hobby. <laughs> it's a smaller scale hobby. So it really gives you the opportunity to use up all of your scraps. So what I'm doing here throughout this whole video is just grabbing scraps of paper and layering them on top of each other. And once I kind of get an idea of what I want or I'm happy with what I'm doing, then I staple them together with my Tim Holtz tiny attacher and then trim off the excess. And I find that crafting like this, doing this crazy layering and reshuffling my papers and rearranging them and all this, it's very therapeutic. For me I don't know if you've ever tried it um, but you should I, I really recommend it like I'm not there's no pressure on me to make this really pretty or perfect because I'm not sending this to anybody it's just gonna go in my my stash but it gives me the opportunity to play with pattern to experiment with color to um, just try new things and here you see I'm just cr crumpling up my paper and then unraveling it and just kind of seeing what that looks like and see if I can work with that so it's all very experimental very um, I guess intuitive you could say and it's a lot of fun I really like it it's just um, like no pressure crafting and no pressure crafting is a great thing because sometimes, you know, when you're making a, a card for somebody or a pocket letter or, you know, snail, a pen pal folder or something, when you're making it for someone, you really put that pressure on yourself to make it really nice. And obviously, you know, you want to give away something that's special to a special someone. Definitely understand that. But sometimes it's, you just want to make something just for the sake of making and there's no pressure and you're just making it for yourself and if somebody doesn't like it that's okay because it's just for you it's just for you to craft solely for the purpose of crafting and I hope that I am making some sense <laughs> And I guess what I'm trying to say, I know I probably sound like a crazy person. I'm sorry. What I'm trying to say is that these crafting sessions that really have no purpose, but it's just me playing around and experimenting. These are really important for me because there is no pressure behind it. And uh, as 
a craft designer is working full time in the craft industry, it's uh, sometimes difficult to create on demand and to create on tight deadlines, which is what my life is. <laughs> my life is one tight deadline after another. <laughs> and I'm su- don't get me wrong, I love, absolutely love my job, and I'm super blessed to be able to craft for a living. But sometimes um, there's a lot of pressure that comes with with the job. And in case you don't know what I do for a living, which is totally fine, (laughs) um, I work at a craft magazine publisher here in the UK, and it's probably the number one craft magazine publisher in the UK. Super awesome, (laughs) super awesome company with lots of magazine titles, both paper craft titles and also soft craft titles like knitting and crocheting. But um, there's also, it's also a e-commerce store which is called Craft Stash, and it's an online craft store. I'll have a link for you below so you can check it out. Yeah, so I work there, and I work on the magazine side of the business and also the e-commerce store side of the business. So I am one busy, busy bee. And oh my goodness, I love my Tim Holtz Tiny Chatter, especially when I'm doing a lot of layering like this. I don't know if you ever have laid out, maybe on a journal page, you put out all your elements and all your layers, and then you remove them all to start gluing them down layer by layer, but then you kind of forget how you laid them out. And sometimes I'll take a picture before I glue everything down just so that I can remember where everything was positioned. But with my tiny attacher, I can just skip that step and just staple just kind of like the big pieces together and then glue them down afterwards if that makes sense and then at the end I'll cover up the little staple with something on top. It's just like a lazy shortcut that I take. Here I'm trimming this handmade with love sentiment and this printable is from my pocket letters shop printable store and these are super cheap super affordable you can get even get an additional 10 percent off using the code jeanette's pal which i will have linked for you below and write the spelling of my name because people misspell it all the time and that's all right (laughs) so i'll have that discount code for you and these are cheap you just buy the file you purchase the file you download it onto your computer and then you can print it up as many times as you want to use for your personal projects super affordable i think they start at something like 99 cents like 99 cents all the way to 250 i believe and jeanette's pal gets you 10 percent off I've really been into fringe texture lately. I don't know why, but just today at work, I was doing a demonstration on how to add this texture to a card. But what I love is that it's a perfect way to use up scraps. And so what I did is just glued my sentiment onto this little tiny piece of hot pink cardstock. And then I just trimmed it, like made a little fringe with my scissors and I'm just ruffling it up just a little bit to give it more pop, a little bit more texture. And again, it's just a great way to use up scraps, but also to add some interest and some texture to your projects. I wanted my fringe element to pop out of my card just a little bit more, so I'm gonna be attaching it with some foam tape. Oh my goodness, I go through so much foam tape. It's not even funny, but let me know. I would love to know what supply that you uh, use up the most that you always have to be restocking. Is it adhesive? Is it white cardstock? Is it um, liquid adhesive? Is it foam tape? Like, is it ribbon, stickers? I would love to hear from you. I love learning about you and also hearing from you. So leave a comment below and let me know what supply it is that you use the most and that you run out of the quickest. This next card, this last card is probably my favorite just because it ends up being a little bit different than what I started out with. So I was going for just a lighter, I guess like a different color palette. And then at the end, it just completely changed and it just kind of evolved into (laughs) the end piece. And that's what I love about crafting and creating is that sometimes it's so unpredictable. Like you don't really, like you start off with one idea, but then it, it morphs into, it evolves into something else. And it's just, it's really fun.
I wanted to add some like ruched crepe paper ruching to, is that the right word? I hope it is, <laughs> to the center of my card, but I don't have a sewing machine and I don't have any needles. I have thread, but I don't have needles, which I really need. <laughs> And so what I did is a quick little shortcut is I put some red liner tape down the center and this is just a really strong adhesive and then I pleated my uh, crepe paper just did a little bit of back and forth folding and then pushed it down on top of the red liner tape and it created a little bit of ruching so just um faking fake fake ruching <laughs> so that's a quick little shortcut in case you don't have a sewing machine like me or maybe you don't have any needles but you have a lot of thread and you really need to find out where you can buy some needles. <laughs> Now I'm just gluing down the rest of my bits. So a little bit of vellum and my sentiment, which says happy mail. And yeah, that's the end of the video. Thank you so very much for sticking around and <laughs> tuning in and just listening to my rambling. I do apologize for that. I was very rambly this video, but yeah, hopefully you were inspired to try some of the things that I shared. And yeah, thank you so very much for watching and I will see you really soon. Bye.